Welcome back, my lover of wisdom, my gods and goddesses. Today I want to talk to you about your life purpose. What is your life purpose? You see, whether or not you are aware of it, you have a life purpose. We think so often that we are helpless, but we're not helpless. We have the most powerful tool ever created by nature, and that is our minds. And you shape every moment of your life based on your thoughts, your beliefs, and your attitudes. And perhaps you're thinking, I'm not so important in this world, and you couldn't be more mistaken. You have a vital role to play in the evolution of this world. Just the fact that you are alive is important and your life has meaning and you can contribute to the peace and the harmony of this whole world just by using your mind. Now, some people go into politics or they join the Peace Corps or they do voluntary actions and that's fine and if you want, do that. Every time you have a thought, every time you make a decision, you're actually affecting the whole world. You are contributing to world peace through your thoughts every moment of every day. Your purpose here on earth is to help bring about peace, the final ending of war. Now I know this might seem strange to you. You may think that war is inevitable, that no matter what there will always be war. Well, that is a great misconception. If you believe that we must always have war, that it's inevitable, you're actually contributing to this inevitability. You're contributing to that reality. So it's time we take charge of our own thoughts and recognize what a huge difference even individuals like you and me can make in the future of the world. The first step is to create peace within ourself. That's why meditation and mindfulness practice are so important. In ancient Greece, they created this concept of ichiosis, which is the idea that the earth belongs to you. We begin to create peace within ourself, then we create peace in our relationships, forgiveness and understanding to others who are in our family and our social circle. And this begins to spread out from communities to countries, to continents, and finally to the whole world. You are a vital part of this transformation. When you practice meditation, these guided meditations that I offer you, you are connecting your vibration to other like-minded people. You are connecting and contributing to creating peace on earth. Now we are at a time in history where all these like-minded spiritual people are connecting. And when I say spiritual people, I mean people who want to live with virtue, who want to live with love, and who want to contribute to the improvement of this world. I'm not linking spirituality with religion. We don't really need a middleman. 
If you happen to be part of a religion, that's fine. If you like the annual celebrations, that's fine. But to really call yourself a spiritual person, all you really need to do is open your heart to love. Open your heart to connection with others. Open your heart to collaborating with others to bring about a better world. Every time we practice understanding and compassion, every time we do something nice for someone else, we are spiritual beings. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Every time you get into judgment and criticism, every time you fill your thoughts with toxicity and you poison your body with toxic thoughts, you are contributing to war. You are contributing to the pollution of this planet. Every thought that you have will come back to you in one way or another. It's not always an immediate coming back. It's not always an immediate reflection. But every thought and action you put out ripples back to you because you will attract it. You are putting out a frequency. It's like tuning into a certain radio station. So you have to become extremely vigilant of the types of thoughts that you have. You have to start being more mindful of your thoughts and actions and how they are affecting not only you, but the whole planet. When I say meditating, I don't only mean these guided meditations that I offer. I mean taking time out two, three, or even four times a day, taking a time out and simply reflecting on gratitude simply reflecting on all the blessings in your life. Even if you don't actually have those blessings yet, you can be grateful in advance. We can affect our future from our thoughts today. If you're, for example, grateful for the love in your life, just simply going into that frequency of love and connection, even if you don't have an actual soulmate right now, even if you don't have a specific person that you're loving, but you're open to all the love that you can absorb and you tune into love and peace and connection, you will see how easily you will begin to attract people of a similar frequency. And this is not metaphysics. This is a very practical and reasonable and logical conclusion that like attracts like. So if you want more love in your world, you have to focus on love at least four times a day. Love is a practice. It's not something that just happens. Love is something you focus your attention on. And in this way, you attract it to you. Socrates, the great Greek philosopher, claimed he had something like a guardian spirit. He called this the demonion. I believe that each person has their guardian spirit. It's your own higher self. It's not something outside of you. It's your own inner wisdom. Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, believed that we all have the wisdom within us. A good teacher, a good guru, will simply remind you of the things you already know. This is what I'm doing right now. Everything I'm telling you, you already know. It's just nice sometimes to be reminded, to attune with this inner wisdom. You really have all the answers within you. And all you need to do is quiet down long enough so that you can listen to that insight, listen to that inner wisdom. If you're honest with yourself and you use my method, the three golden principles of Greek philosophy, ethos, pathos, logos, 
you will always find your direction in life. Remember the three questions of the Algestis method. Ethos, is that thought or belief true? Is it 100% true? Do you have integrity when you're thinking a certain thought? That's all you need to do. Check yourself. Does this thought really stand? Or are you dramatizing? Or maybe you're generalizing? Or taking things too personally? Then you move to the second question, pathos. Pathos is about passion and feeling and is all about empathy and compassion. So with pathos, the question you ask yourself is, is it kind? Is having this belief, is having this compulsive thought kind to yourself or to the other person involved? And very often you'll see that your thoughts have not been kind, especially the ones that are causing you toxicity. So keep asking yourself, is this thought kind? And the third question you need to ask yourself is the question related to logos, logic and reason. The question you ask yourself under this category, under this principle is, is it useful? Is the thought I'm having, if I keep having this thought, is it useful to me? What's the point of having this thought? Is it contributing anything to the solution? That's the inner work you have to do. Quieting your mind on a regular basis, catching your thoughts, being vigilant, especially of those thoughts that are bringing you down, that are causing you anxiety. You are the master of your thoughts. No one can enter your mind unless you allow them. Remember the Stoic principle of the dichotomy of control. We Stoics ask ourselves, can I do something about this problem or is it beyond my control? This is also thought behind the serenity prayer of the Christians. God, give me the serenity to accept those things I cannot change. The courage to change those things I can change. And the wisdom to know the difference. So you will become a practitioner of stilling your mind, questioning your limiting beliefs, and that to me is the purpose of meditation. And every time you do that, interestingly enough, you connect with all other like-minded spirits and they are growing in numbers. We are growing, we are becoming more and more conscious as humanity understands that they can have direct link to the divine, to wisdom, to universal and cosmic love. We are taking back spirituality. Although religions offer us much, they also create separation. It's us and them. We can move on from the religious approach to God. Everybody has this connection to the good. Anyone who doesn't is simply a sociopath or a psychopath even worse. These are sick people. You know, one of my greatest heroes is Viktor Frankl, who created this um, school of psychology called logotherapy. Logos in Greek has to do with reason. Viktor Frankl said that those people who have a reason for living, a life purpose, will always be able to make it through no matter what's going on in their life. And he should know. He actually survived the concentration camps. I don't think there's anything worse than a concentration camp, okay? And he noted that among the people who died first were those people who didn't have something to live for, a purpose. 
something to keep them hanging on. That's why he believed so much in finding your purpose. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is to make you understand and to share with you my view that you have a purpose. Whether or not you are aware of your purpose, it doesn't matter. Knowing that you do have a purpose can hold you until you discover it. And the simplest purpose for you right now, if you don't have an actual purpose that you believe in, is simply the purpose of being a force of good in the world, being a force of peace, being a source of love, doing your regular meditation, connecting to this global peace that we are all creating. Now, if you want to get more specific, to pinpoint this, a more practical purpose, go ahead and read my book, From Fear to Freedom. In here, you will find an exercise based on ethos, pathos, and logos, and you will work through, because it's a workbook, you will be able to work through and discover your life purpose. Now, this book is available on Amazon, but you can also have a summary of this book, of my method, if you go to my website and simply put your name and email, and you can download a free summary where you will begin to discover my method. So thank you for listening. And if you like this video, please go ahead and comment below, share it with your friends on social media, and support my work on patreon.com. And I'll see you on the next episode of Alkestis TV.